what's going on guys welcome back to our let's play series now last time we left off working on the double spawner at the end of the episode now that project has been pretty much completed i just need to tidy it up and uh sort out a much better way of getting to and from this double spawner i'll quickly show you what i've done with it so far now I'll set up a little viewing room here and I've tidied it all up apart from all of this still looks like a building site. I'm not completely 100% sure on the wood. I'm definitely keeping the bone blocks. I do like them a lot. I'm thinking of trying out different materials for the walls and the floor. I was thinking blue wool for the walls and ceiling and then birch wood for the floor. Hopefully that that will contrast better. So I'll swap that all out <clears throat> after I do my next cut. And I'll bring you back to show you what that all looks like. Now the project that we're going to be working on today. This is all working fine. I can activate it by turning the lights off. Hopefully you can still see. That's a lighting glitch at the back. It is actually pitch black in there. Wait a moment. Now the issue I'm getting with this is that there's a slime chunk directly behind it. So once that fills up with slimes, this seems to become virtually inactive. Which gets really annoying. But that's my own fault for starting to dig out the slime chunk. Whilst this was so nearby. Now the project that we were working on today is going to be the elevator that I'm going to be put in here which I've already dug out the area for and it's this big it's uh, an elevator that I've created in my redstone world to make sure it was all working I'll bring you over to show you the ins and outs of it before I actually put it in here and it's the only elevator that I've managed to find or not find but create that isn't affected by the console issues of the lag because each time you get the little saving symbol up in the top right hand corner it's quite a large lag spike and I've tried a number of different piston elevators and each one seems to have issues with their timing of the redstone but the one I've created is very very console friendly it's done modular so each section is activated by the section below. So you don't really have the issues with the lag. Um, also around here, I've tried to tidy it up a bit more. I've put in a lot of light and got rid of a lot of the torches. But there's a bug with the leaf blocks. They're now blocking out light completely. So I've had to use green wool to cover up the jack-o'-lanterns, which provide the light in hate torches so much they just don't look nice on the walls here and there as decoration and to light up that area it looks fairly decent but when you need to dot them about everywhere just to light up an area to stop mob spawns it just looks atrocious like if i bring you down here to the sand you could tell that it just it doesn't look nice at all when they're just dotted about just to stop mob spawns so i'm using the green wall to cover up jack-o'-lanterns and I will use bone mill just to blend it in a little bit more so they're not so noticeable but the ones I've done so far makes it look nice when it's at night it does light up the area well enough to stop mob spawns so that does work pretty well also in between episodes I ran drastically short on storage space so I got rid of all of the chests up here and I made a little storage room down here I did this off camera because I wasn't completely sure what I was going to be going for and it was a lot of um and ah in about what blocks I wanted I chose just to keep it the same as the house so it didn't look weird the transition going back and forth so often uh, I done the stairs upside down and forward facing to give the indent in the wall just to give it a bit of depth to make it look a lot better also along underneath the furnaces and along the top I've lit up the back of the chest with a line of jack-o'-lanterns underneath the chest just to 
make it a lot brighter so it's not dark and dingy down here which it was also a simple slime block well simple slime block launcher to get me back and forth so that works really well I let it's actually become a night time so as you can see already the jack lanterns in the ground do work with the carpet over them and it looks a hell of a lot nicer than with torches just sporadically laid about everywhere which was driving me insane but if I quickly grab one of the leaf blocks I'll show you what I mean about the bug that is uh, giving me a lot of grief because usually I bury the uh, jack-o'-lanterns in the ground by two blocks with a couple of leaf blocks and then probably a bush on top just to give it the hidden lighting effect now if we go over here pick this up if I lay this see completely takes away all of the light which it should not be doing and hopefully Minecraft fixes that fairly soon now before I get started on the piston elevator I'm going to bring you over to my redstone test world to show you the ins and outs of it <clears throat> and give you a brief tutorial on how it all works so I'll see you over there and welcome guys to my redstone world it's a brand new one for a brand new amplified world that I'm doing my last one I didn't actually think of doing the flat world with iron blocks to stop all the animals from spawning so in my last one it was got overrun by all the animals interfering with all of the redstone devices I was building but this one nice fresh new simple now the piston elevator that I'm doing it's a simple one that goes only up not down so you will need a quick drop in conjunction with it now I'll give you a quick show it's very quick no lag issues and that's because each section is activated by the section before so this piston is then activated by this one so each one is self-activating it's modular it's stackable it you can have it infinitely going up there's no limit to how high you can take it now before I explain how that actually works I'll just give you a brief description of what the piston dislocation glitch is now it was implemented on the PC ages ago and it's only just been recently fixed on the PC with their adventure update but luckily for console version they've just introduced it to us and it works a lot better with uh, sticky pistons I've tried normal pistons and two or three times out of ten it won't actually pull you through but with a sticky piston it's every single time without a fail it'll push you through see what it does it actually drags you through the block to above it now this is extremely handy when it comes to the elevator design it makes it very simple and also you can use it in a number of different forms which i'm playing around with at the moment which will be later on in the series I hope hopefully they don't patch it too soon but if they only patch it in the adventure update then I'd say we've got a fair good few months with this glitch sitting in our game which I'm happy for now each section is self-activating so you don't get the issue with the lag it's very very simple design well, as you can see without fail every single time It works no problem now I'll build one module just to show you how it all works so what you got sticky pistons there now the system behind this with the tripwire hook once it's activated it will then get amplified by the repeater into this sticky piston and also into this block now using this block put a bit of redstone so then it transfers the signal to the redstone at the same time activating the piston flipping it up so then this redstone only gets a one tick pulse this is why it is a one tick pulse generator just for those who didn't know and then with that one tick pulse you don't have the issue with the actual piston 
staying down. So then, I hate doing redstone on camera by the way. And then you need to wrap, yeah that's better actually. <coughs> Sorry. So as you can see, it's one tick pulse, that bit of redstone lights up for a bare millisecond. And then when you wrap it round to the piston, it will quickly activate the piston and then deactivate it rather than it staying on. Oh, what have I done? Oh, I didn't actually put the repeater there. That's my mistake. That's how comes I never do redstone on camera. And then, there we go. So this is one module and it can be infinitely stacked upwards. Now I have tried to make it smaller. There is a way of making it smaller, which is what my first design was. But I came into the issue that these tripwire hooks were activating this piston and leaving it in a block update status. So they would leave the remainder of the pistons open. If I jump into this one, as you can see, all of these pistons remain open because they've been activated by the following tripwire hook. And they won't actually retract until you update the actual block. Now, if you can find a way of making this design a lot more simple and compact, then I'm more than happy for you to do it and link me into it. So then I can actually implement it into my world also. But this is definitely a console friendly piston elevator and it works without fail every time. Just make sure you use sticky pistons, not normal pistons, because otherwise sometimes you'll just get stuck sitting in the tripwire hook and it won't actually pull you through. I'm not too sure why that is. I think it may be because the hitbox of the piston head with the sticky pistons is larger than the normal one, making it more reliable to actually drag you through the block. But as you can see, very simple design, very easy to build, very resource friendly. The only expense is the pistons and the repeaters, but repeaters aren't exactly very expensive. Now, whilst I'm in my test world, I actually want to try something out. The issue that I came in with my world with breeding animals is that the mob cap on the console is ridiculously low. So after breeding them about five or six times, you'll get that stupid message saying that you've reached the maximum amount of sheep, pigs, cows. But what I didn't realize is that the message of it also says excluding chickens, mushrooms, and wolves. So I'm not sure if that means that you can have the maximum number of sheep, but then instead of having another cow farm, which will mix with that maximum cap, have a mushroom farm. So let me grab a mushroom egg and some sheep eggs. And we'll quickly spawn these in just to get the maximum amount number. I've put them in a box just because uh, I want to kill them all because I don't want them wandering around my world. Not to test world anyway. Otherwise I'll be shooting up and down the piston elevators doing my nutting each time I'm trying to work on something. Come on. There we go. Can't use spawn egg at the moment. Maximum number of animals excluding wolves, bats, chickens and mushrooms. So what I am wondering is that... Can, oh, that wasn't helpful at all, was it? If we then spawn some mushrooms in, are they introduced into a completely separate mod cap? Which I'm hoping is the case. That way I can have a cow and sheep farm without them only being able to bred up to about 5 or 10 maximum. And yeah, would you look at that? That is definitely a thing. Um, now for the fun part, because it's a creative world, we don't really want these just sitting here. But I'll definitely be implementing that, I just need to try to find a mushroom biome. <laughs> My god, not the babies. I'm sorry, this is not animal cruelty, they're just 
very loud and annoying. Let me quickly patch up this hole. I'll bring you back once I'm back in my normal world. I'll build the piston elevator. And yep, let me just get them bits and pieces done. Get this area tidied up and I'll bring you back. What's going on guys? Now I've finished building the piston elevator. It took me about 20 minutes to half an hour to completely finish it. Re-terraformed this area here. Done a quick drop just behind it here. So it doesn't extrude from the terrain all that much. So it looks still nice around our cottage. Now I've had to put blocks either side of the piston to keep yourself aligned as you go up. Give it a quick test. And... Up at the top, nice. Now I did initially cover this with green carpet to match where I've done the lanterns. Now for some reason in the PC version you could then do this when the glitch was active. You could put carpet on top and it would pull you through the carpet but console version you just get stuck underneath the piston constantly trying to drag you through and you end up taking damage. Nearly died doing it which was uh, loads of fun. Now that's all up and running. I do still need to tidy it all up and I need to make the hallway to the double mob spawner and open it all up. But before we end today's episode, I did want to test out what the blue wall and the birch wood would look like in here. So let's clear out a little area quickly. There we go. Let's get some light in here. It's hard to see anything at the moment. There we go. And let's pull up the floor. Now I've been getting fairly decent rates. As soon as you come down here, it's pretty good. But with the slime chunk active like 20 or 30 blocks away, that after enough slime spawn, this virtually becomes just pointless. So after I've dug out that slime chunk and got it all set up to kill the slimes quickly, then we shouldn't have an issue here. But I did set up a little viewing room and I did replace all the walls with cobblestone. I need to do something about that wall, but that wall is bang on the edge of this side 
So if I had cobblestone on the inside there for the viewing area, then you would have had cobblestone. What you would have had to have cobblestone here, unless I bring the wall one further out, which means the mobs drop there and it just felt a little bit too cramped. So I'll have a play around with that and see how it goes. See how these contrast with the bone blocks. going to need to have a bit more of you see how it goes around the edge it's not bad actually I'll try it with the blue wall wow that is uh, seriously blue but I'm going to be spending quite a lot of time down here so I, you won't see too much of it because it's just going to be me AFK at the spawners but because I'll be here a lot to enchant all my tools and stuff I'm definitely going to have to see how it looks with more of it done. It's hard to tell with the wood still here. But I am liking the blue wall next to the bone blocks. I'm just not 100% convinced with the birch wood. I'm not sure whether to go brighter or darker with the wood. Because I could use the dark oak or the spruce. But I thought that the brightness of the birch wood would contrast well with the bone block. Let's have a Look how it looks on the ceiling. Oh. Misplacing blocks. Been on it far too long today. Uh, have I got any more half slabs? Yeah, I have. Um. I think it looks well. I'm not too sure with it on the floor. I may actually swap this back out for the stone. But I'm definitely liking the blue wall. It definitely brings something else to it that so it's not so dreary and dull down here. If I spread the blue wall around here, it means I'm gonna have to shear a lot more sheep. It's not a problem. But um for today I think that's gonna do it. So see you next time. Next time I'm planning on starting work on the actual slime farm itself so i'll have that dug out and all ready to go see you next time